Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a Paris springtime in Paris, I'm calling it, <laughs> a Paris landscape. Uh, we're going to try to keep this kind of a soft impressionist style, uh, and uh, I'll show you step by step how to do it from start to finish. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat for our special Thursday night live show here, so uh, let's get started. <laughs> Alrighty, so this is our referenced image. I just really like the soft colors and everything. And so we're gonna keep the uh, Eiffel Tower kind of soft and blendy looking. Um, so it won't be, I, I think it'll be a little bit easier to do that way too. So um, I'm using a 12 inch uh, Belgian linen canvas board from Fredericks. These are kind of my go-to canvases. I really like them. Uh, nice hard archival board to work on. And uh, we will be using some Princeton brushes tonight. I'm going to use a new brush. This is a two inch paddle red from the red line series. I think I'm going to use that for some of the background effects uh, to get that kind of blended look in the background. And then I'll also use a number 12 bright, a number number eight bright, a number four and a number two bright. I've just got a few um, bright brushes in different sizes for some of the buildings um, in the foreground. Um, so you can really use whatever brushes you've got. I've got a number one round as well. These are the 6100 series and the, the green handles. And then I've got a few other brushes here for some of the smaller details. I've got a couple small rounds for the tree branches and some of the details on the Eiffel Tower. I've got a number three round and a one round in the uh, red handled velvet touch line. Of Princeton brushes and then these are the three eighths inch and, and a quarter inch angle brushes. I'm not sure I'm going to use all these brushes but I'm just pulling out the ones that I think I might need so we'll see which ones we actually use. I've got a quarter inch and a three eighths inch Willows blender and then I grabbed a little uh, new, new brush. I haven't used this one before. It's a number two chisel blender. It's a really really fine little squared off tip and then I have my uh, Deerfoot stippler for some of the blending um, and uh, in the clouds and things. So those will be our brushes. Thank you to Princeton and Fredericks, our sponsors for products that we're using tonight. Um, you'll also possibly, I'm not sure if we'll use these or not, but we're, I'm using some uh, Carbothello um, chalk pencils for some of the details on the Eiffel Tower as well to chalk them in and possibly uh, might go over some of my lines with the pencil. So if you've got some colored pencils or some um, pastel pencils or something like that, you might grab those for this project. It might make some of doing our, some of our lines a little bit easier. That's what I'm thinking. Um, go over colors really quick. I've got quinacridone magenta, cadmium, or I'm sorry, yellow oxide, cadmium, yellow medium. This is light thalo blue, just white plus thalo blue, which is this one. Uh, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and burnt umber. And then I have some glazing liquid, some titanium white, some unbleached titanium, and some zinc white for our clouds. And the zinc white is a fluid zinc white. So if you want to use exactly what I'm using, that's what it's a little bit more fluid. All right, I'm going to dip this paddle brush into my water. And... Grab a good amount of my white and just a little bit of my yellow. Very little bit. That's all you're going to need. And I'm going to start down here in the foreground and kind of move my way up since we've got a lot of yellow down in here. And I'm not really going to worry about my um, buildings quite yet. I'm just going to paint over this whole area. So I'm going to start down here at the bottom. And um, I think I'm going to spray my canvas too just once with water. Maybe twice there. I would say just once and then I do it twice. Almost every time. All right. Get a little bit more water on my About how many milliliters here. was that? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Two spritz. Yeah, a couple spritzes there. And I'm just going to go side to side here. Get a little bit more white. I'm going to get some yellow oxide. And a little bit more of that cadmium yellow. Maybe even some of my unbleached titanium here. There we go. A little bit deeper yellow color here. There we 
Ja. So and I'm not going to go more than about halfway up with this yellow color and then I'm going to transition to my blues. It's going to be mostly more yellow like right in this area and um, then we're going to have lots of blue at the top. Okay, I'm going to try to kind of clean that out. Just dip it in my water and I'll brush off most of that color. It holds a lot of paint. It's not coming off there. There we go. Okay, let's grab some of that light phthalo blue and I can add just a little bit. I'm not worried too much about this yellow because the sky is kind of tinted green. It's got that little bit of a of a uh, sunrise or sunset effect. It's got it's picking up the yellow glow in the sky here. So there we go. It's kind of subtle. You can barely see it, I think. Maybe on the camera it's not showing pretty well, but I can see it. It's all right. Okay. And then as I go towards the top, I'm just always kind of working right above my previous layer and then pulling down into the lower area to blend in the new color. Going side to side, keeping it nice and soft and blendy. And I'm going to grab a little bit of the phthalo blue, the darker, for up here. There we go. That area back here up at the top is a little bit darker blue. This brush is actually making this really easy. It's, I like it. This is the first time I've used it this kind of thing, but having it so short, I think gives it a little bit more control over holding it. Okay. Pretty happy with that, I think. You can go a little bit lower with the blue on this side. Okay. Now I'm gonna grab just the tiniest bit of pink. While I've got this wet, I'm just gonna Dab it in just a few little pink clouds, maybe. Maybe too soon to do this. Yeah, this brush may be a little bit too big for that. Wipe it off, get a little bit more white. And just go back over that and kind of softly blend that in. Hey, what's, what's the name of the brush again that you're using? The red line number two or two inch, and I don't have this in my brush guys list right now, so oh, I need to get it on there. Man. I'm sorry, I know. I need to update my list. Well, no vacation for you. I know. Put out some more of that light blue and some more of my white here. And I'm probably going to have to have you dry this, honey. Why don't you go ahead and do that while I'm putting out more colors and stuff. Thank you. We'll probably do one more layer of paint on top of that. So if you wanted to, I thought about doing this, but I just didn't. I ran out of time. But what you might want to do is cover the entire canvas with that light, light yellow. Um, and then do like just as a ground layer and then we can do the other on top. So here, let's just, I'm going to draw it this time. We're just going to draw in a little Eiffel Tower back here in the background way behind this tree for our stick man. This is... Mark's stickman creation. We kind of play around and add to it from time to time. Most of that's going to be behind the thing. Actually, that was a pretty good place to put it because then I don't have to do a lot of detail on it. <laughs> there, we have a little parrot touch of Paris back there behind her so we just add a little bit to it just for fun while Mark's blow drying um, but you can kind of see there while I was doing that how you draw the Eiffel Tower and I guess I can 
go over that again really quick with you guys if you want. Um, oh, no, okay. Here we go. Thank you, hon. All right, so there's just a little bit of that. Did you get a photo of that, hon, before we started? Okay, dry. Thank you. So I think I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now just to give me a little bit more control over these areas. And actually dried a little bit darker so you can kind of see what we were going for there now. This is number 12. So I'm going to grab the Thala Blue, that Thala Blue light. And I'm just going over the top of this this um, layer here that we've already got. So it might be picking up some of the yellows and other colors, but I don't mind that. I'm just gonna do one more layer on top of this so that it's covered well. And that'll pick up any streaks and things. And then while I'm doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of my clouds and things. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of yellow to these clouds. They're picking up that sunset color. And they're not perfectly white. Let's get some of that zinc white, actually. So I'm going to dab in. I'm just using the corner of my brush here. Just dabbing over there, and then I'm going to grab some of that darker blue again. Wipe most of it off so that I just have very little paint on my brush. I'm just going to lightly blend over those clouds just to kind of blend them in. Now, my, my blue is already kind of wet when I put that white on there, so you kind of have to do this quickly. Um, if you're, you know, if you're kind of slow with painting, then you might want to do just this area. Don't go over here and add your white over here. So I just kind of added it because I already had it on my brush. But um, you want to work very quickly with these acrylics. So I'm going to put some more clouds up in here. I'm just using the corner of my brush to dab in here. I don't even think I'm going to end up using my Deerfoot stippler for these after all. I'm kind of liking these. Wipe my brush off, pick up a little bit of blue, and just lightly kind of dust over. I'm kind of just using my, my large flat as a, or like a mop brush. So if you have a mop brush and you like to do your clouds with that, you could totally, you know, switch to a mop brush for this. Some people might, you know, you might find it easier. It's up to you. Okay, just tapping it a little bit more, but you want to do this once that blue's down and completely dry underneath, otherwise you could end up lifting off your blue color underneath, so. From that first layer. Okay, that's good. I think that's good enough. Just kind of subtle. They're not really super detailed clouds and stuff. So I'm just going to keep on kind of working in here, adding some more sort of low-level clouds now. And getting some more of that blue. And... Brushing it through. I hadn't done the blue down here. I kind of stopped right about here with my blue layer. So I'm just going to kind of add more of this light blue. Set light veil of blue. And blend. Give my second coat through the whole area here. Let's go grab some yellow now. A little bit of yellow oxide, cadmium yellow. And my white. And I still had that blue in my brush, so it kind of tinted it a little bit. And this, I'm going to grab a little bit of glazing liquid that will help it glide on this part. And you could do the glazing liquid up here too if that helps you. There we go. Really cool. Let's grab a little bit more white. There we go.
really is kind of green sky. I don't know. If the green bothers you, you can add a little bit of pink or something to this. Grab a little bit more of that blue with my white. I'm grab a little bit of glazing liquid just to help it kind of smooth on there. A little bit more yellow. Of course that yellow is like way too bright so I'm just gonna tone it down with my white. Grab a little bit of glazing liquid. Help it smooth on there. And I'll probably end up having to have you do something with this too maybe honey. Well actually I think I'll I'll probably just work on this foreground. I can put it start in the adding fridge our or something. What? That I can put it in the fridge or something. <laughs> Dryer. Yeah. Thank let, it, you. let it tumble around a little bit. That's all right. I think we're we're good. Okay, I think that's pretty good. A little bit more of that light blue. I'm just gonna work on this transition between those two colors. You just want a soft transition between your colors. That's the main thing. So if you've got like a really solid line there, you may wanna I'm just gonna play with it a little bit more. You can dust on a little bit of this color a little bit higher up here. I'm noticing it up a little bit higher up here in our blue too. There's some kind of yellowish clouds that are coming across here. Grab a little bit of that glazing liquid. This blue is starting to get kind of dried, so it may be a little sticky. So, and the rule with acrylics is if it's sticky, you want to let it dry completely before you keep messing with it. So this was not too bad. It was dry enough that I could do this. But if you're super sticky up there, just let it dry completely before you try to so this part up here I'm talking about because we already kind of worked on it and then moved down here and then going back up to it can can lift your color if you don't let it, give it enough time to dry. So I'm going to grab a little bit of pink. I'm just going to brush a little bit of pink. Very little paint on my brush. So I have very little and then you can't even see that it's pink on there. So these color changes are very subtle. are way too bright. So grab some white, a little bit of glazing liquid, and just brush over those to kind of tone them down. There we go. So very light. Subtle changes here. And grab some more of that yellow that was kind of that background color there. Grab some glazing liquid. Wipe most of it off. stop messing with that because it's starting to get very sticky so okay, I'm gonna stop right there so let's work on this bottom area here a little bit so it's gonna be much darker it's gonna go dark really quickly and our um, first layer of the background is going to be right about the quarter mark on our canvas right here that'll be kind of that far far distant 
um, buildings. So I'm going to do the buildings with a gray blue. So I'm going to mix the ultramarine blue with some burnt umber here. bit more blue than gray okay and then I'm going to use this color that I have for my background and I'm going to lighten up this color so that it is only like one tiny shade darker than my background so right about there I'm gonna find that quarter mark here and I'm just gonna start kind of laying in some buildings and I'm not going to think about it or you know overthink it too much they're just going to be these kind of light shapes keep them sort of squared off but that's probably even too dark I want to barely be able to see it against that background this will dry darker so if I go in this dark right now even if it's the color that you know like pretty close to the color that I think I want it to be it's gonna end up being too dark when it dries so I want to just make sure I go in nice and subtle and I got a little bit more of that blue because I want it more blue Okay, and then right on the, this is going to be all kind of behind the Eiffel Tower, so we'll see it, but it's going to be kind of blocked a little bit. I'll try to keep it about the same height. And then this is going to kind of blend off into this. sunset area and that is all going to be obscured but I can kind of just feather it in for now and then when I go back in I can do my yellow over the top right there to blend it in fade it in Does that makes sense so I need to keep this a little bit higher maybe it's kind of going on sticky because that paint underneath is a little bit wet. So just kind of keep, you may want to let your background dry completely before you do this layer. Might help. All right, and then I'm just going to kind of feather off that bottom edge there so that it's not super obvious. Grab a little glazing liquid. A little bit of white. There we go. Okay. So there's our far distant buildings. Then we're going to come down just a little bit. And I'm going to grab some more of that gray. Grab a little bit more of that ultramarine blue. Just trying to darken that up just slightly, or blue it up, I mean, make it more blue. Okay, now get a little bit darker color, and this is where I might... switch to one of my smaller brushes. Now let me, first I'm just going to kind of put the basic color down and then I can kind of go back in and edit. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with this brush because it'll cover better on long or bigger areas. I'm just going to start to kind of pull down some more shapes. Okay. 
these don't have to look like buildings at this point. We're just going to, we're kind of doing like these random like square topped shapes here. So don't, don't worry if they don't look like buildings yet. We'll kind of get there. Right now we're just kind of worried about getting the colors kind of closer to where we want them to be. The values a little bit closer to where we want them to be. We want them to go from light up there at the foreground to darker down here at the bottom of the canvas. Oh, it's borderline oh. panicking there. Were you? Yeah, but thanks to you. Thanks. Tell me not to worry. I'm, I'm okay. calming down. Good. Okay. You can sense it in my voice. <laughs> Hi everybody Welcome to the special Thursday night edition Yeah So I split this in about in a half right here So the distance between this was where, you know, the f start here I'm just going a little bit darker This is all going to be really, really light over in here. color. And I mixed a little bit of that yellow in with it there. It's right there. Got a little bit more blue. I'm just going to dab in. Split it again, or maybe a little bit less than half, a little bit more than half, I mean, right here. And I'm going to do different levels right along here. Try to keep these vertical. Good enough. What? Reminds me of those commercials that are popular now. Oh. <laughs> I'm okay. It's okay. That's, right. That's good enough. It's good enough. It's just okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was crack up at the babysitter one because she's like, and... What are their names again? Like the baby, the kids' names. I can't remember. <laughs> it's like that was me as a as a babysitter. That was bad. All right. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to have you dry this, honey, because it's just not. It's gonna be too sticky to try to do anything else to it right now. So sorry, guys. This is one that's gonna take a few drying steps but let's go ahead and draw our Eiffel Tower. I guess I'll just use the back of our paper here. So when we do it we're going to um, do a straight line through the middle. Relatively straight. <laughs> and the base it's not super wide compared to the top so don't go too wide there and then we're going to go on either side here out just a little bit this one it's showing us the side of it so um what we can do is kind of figure out the height of it here it's going to be three yeah broken up into three parts here here and here this part is 
right here, this section that sticks out. And it's about as wide as it is tall right there. So you can kind of figure out that distance there and then do it as wide as that. And that'll be about right. Aside from like getting out your measuring stick. And this width is, I think about twice what it is up here. So at the very top, this, this section would be here and here twice. So it's not super wide right here. And then it rapidly widens from here to here. And then this just narrowly kind of comes up pretty quickly all the way up to there. Like that. And then at the top, there's just like a little observation deck thingy. Looks like a little hat almost. Yeah, some things sticking out and then you've got your little spire, right? And then the middle section here is fairly dark because this part is actually pointing down towards us. I am. Okay. And then this is arched up here. This is split in half uh, again. This from here to here, split in half again. And the, the angle this is at, we're not really seeing it come down any. We're looking at it almost straight on. So it just looks flat right here, even though if you were looking at it at a different angle, you would see that this is pointing out at us on this side. So a little bit wider here. And really, I'm going to I'm gonna paint it just about this sloppy. I'm not going to give it a whole lot of, like, clean lines. I want it to be kind of impressionistic sort of messy looking a little bit almost so this angles out right here and here this angles out a little bit right here and here and there's all kinds of railings and things are happening here and then these arches are right here and you're not really seeing this back leg because it's covered up by this one here so what what are you laughing at somebody sitting in my chair <laughs> hey you usually lose <laughs> oh, you noticed them. Um, and then there's kind of a split right here that happens. That's the width of these legs here. It splits and goes up. It meets right there. Okay. So there's a little apple tower and then there's a little something right there. Part of the elevator or something there and then you're going to have like these little crisscrossy things all of these I find it's just easier to go through and do them all in one direction and then go back in and do the opposite direction and they really do pretty much go all the way down to the bottom there Same thing with these. And there's some bigger X's and things. You know, there's all kinds of little details that you can put in. These are all kind of filled in here, all through here. This bottom part is solid or, you know, see-through is solid, but you know what I'm talking about. It's no, no big open spaces. And then this is open here. And then there's part of this that comes down right there. Okay, so there's our detailed drawing. There we go. Very good. So you can see how we're kind of going. This is this is this background area, and this is this foreground. I think we got it fairly close to those colors. And then this is definitely going to have to be darker down in here, but uh, I didn't want to go too dark too quickly. So, and then this area over here is definitely going to have to come out lighter, but we got it fairly good start, I think. 
So let's go ahead and draw in our Eiffel Tower. Now that I just did that on there. Now that we drew it, let's draw it. Let's draw it, exactly. Check. Come on, I gotta get my chalk won't come out. Uh, I just use my... Yeah, it's not gonna show up. This one might show up okay. All right, so this is I, the way I cropped it. It was directly on the third. So if you met, you mark out your third here. This is going to be where our Eiffel Tower lives, and we're just going to do our straight line all the way down right here. And it's probably completely invisible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's. Do it with the darker color just slightly. There we go. And this goes down all the way to this part here that we mapped out, which is about half of, this is a quarter, it's a quarter, so it's about an eighth from the bottom or so. And it actually dips down a little bit even more right here. And then so we kind of figured out where how tall we want it. So we're going to mark that in thirds. So just figure out where my thirds are on my line right about there. And right about there. Okay. Marking my thirds. And then this is going to be about as wide, twice as wide as this up here. So we can kind of figure out where we want the top observation deck and then the this this measurement is to the very top so or to about halfway up the the almost to the top of the spire but not quite so and I'm sure if we if we um, could see the bottom of it it's probably longer here so it probably would be all the way to the top but since we're not seeing the very bottom you can come maybe down just a little bit from the very bottom and do it that way so that line is right in here and that is going to be about twice as wide as the top of our observation deck which i'm going to put it just down in here a little bit lower so this is twice as wide as that and then this is going to be about the same distance as that. So we're going to do that measurement there and do it right in here, here and here. Okay, and then this is going to angle out here and here. And this is just a chalk pencil, so it's kind of going on softly. Don't want to scratch off my paint. And then this is going to angle out gradually on either side here and try to keep it about the same distance away and the same curvature. So he didn't turn off his phone. Who would have not done that? I don't know. Okay, right there. So there's kind of our basic drawing, I think. That's pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and put in this bottom area here. This is just above this section, if we did it right. So that's about right. It's going to be just above this area here. This is going to stick out a little bit here and here. And come down to about right here. And then there is a V. This width here is going to be about the same width all the way down. Same thing for here. You could see how I kind of came here and I came on either side of my wide line here and went straight down for these legs. There we go. And then fitting in here is these little arches. There's our little Eiffel Tower drawing. Okay. 
All right, so I think I'm gonna use, let's go ahead and use the smallest one for back in here. This is my chisel blender, and I think I might even get this baby one for these even farther pieces here. And I'm gonna use these grays that I've already got here. And some of my phthalo blue from my sky. And make a really light gray. Similar to this color, we're just a little bit off. Maybe we just want it just a little bit different. So be more blue. If you did it, if you did it really blue already, you could do a little bit more gray, whatever you want to do. But we're just going to kind of come in here and add, and I'm using the smallest chisel blender here. Just add some little dabs and color. to indicate like the city back in here. This is probably too, too dark there, so I'm just gonna dab it off. So use your finger to kind of blend it in a little bit. It's where you can define that horizon a little bit. If you want to add some more obvious buildings back there, you can do that. I've got these two brushes kind of both working at the same time here. One's got a little bit more of the yellow and one's got a little bit more of that blue-gray. You can go back in with this color and just sort of soften up these. And add some lighter dabs because it's not just darker in here. There's some lighter sections too. So okay, inquiring minds like want to know what is a chisel blender? Chisel blender is just a small thin it's a shorter it's a short square brush. Huh. Basically. Oh man, I can And hear. I I don't know how they differ from just a regular bright. Um it feels like they've got fewer brush bristles, so maybe it's I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really 100% sure about that. This is the chisel blender in the size that's closer to this. So it's even shorter than that bright. And it's... This one's probably even closer. So yeah, it's a little bit shorter than the bright. So just one step down. Flat would be your longest. And then the chisel... It's not, you know, it's not a necessity. You could even use your flat brush for it instead. Like if you use your flat brush, you can, you can push it down so those bristles flare out a little bit. And you could use that instead, you know, and kind of create some square shapes. So it doesn't have to be the chisel blender, but I, I'm liking this one. It, it worked out pretty good there. So I'm just going to keep on working my way down here, and as I get down farther, I'm going to add more and more of the darker colors and use a bigger brush here. You can go as detailed or not as you want in this section. It's up to you. So if you want to just keep it really random and really, you know, soft and impressionist, you can just leave it exactly the way we just did it. You know, you don't have to go back in here and do this. It's up to you. So 
I'm just going through here and adding little dots, little random shapes. What I'm seeing in the buildings, you know, in my picture. Sometimes long. Sometimes short. a little bit of this color just a little bit above it just slightly like so it's not like a such a harsh transition between those two all of this is going to be that dark Eiffel Tower so we don't have to worry about it too much Your brush is drowning. What do you mean my brush is drowning? Oh, okay. I'll get it out in a minute. I really want to keep these shapes squared off as I can, too. So our, our restaurant of choice is closed. What? Our restaurant of choice is closed. Why? Apparently they're repaving the parking lot. Oh no. Okay. So do you want something from, uh, I don't want to say the place's name. Umber here with my blues. I added a little bit of the quinacridone magenta too. Making a purple and then just deepening it up with a little bit of the burnt umber there. And then all down in here there's just these darker shapes Using some of that gray. Picking up some of my lighter color here. And 
I've done this before with um, with a credit card too. So you could do that if you wanted to. You know, if you wanted like a palette knife look, that would look cool too. So you could think about that. Let me make even yeah, like a little bit of you got warmer tones over here. You got a tutorial on the mm -hmm. cityscape with the credit card. Right, that I do. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, we did... Uh, well, I think we used it on the London one when we did the London street scene. So we've got more of the burnt umber here and this kind of more warmer tones down in here. So now what I want to do is just kind of obscure this and uh, blend it in a little bit because it looks very, you know, obvious here. So I'm just going to kind of make colors that are in between this light and dark color so that I can kind of transition these darker colors in and make them look like part of our composition here. More obvious. There's not a lot of the lighter colors, so I'm just going to kind of try to edit out most of this light color from the bottom, but leave a little bit of it here and there. I can go back in here and kind of make little window shapes or and once I get some of these buildings defined a little bit. I think that's pretty good. Let's use, for the Eiffel Tower itself, I'm going to make a kind of a purple color. So I'm going to use the Quinacridone Magenta and this blue-gray color, the ultramarine blue and burnt umber color. Some burnt sienna mixed in there too. So that's for our branches and for the Eiffel Tower we're going to add more of the ultramarine blue and brown, burnt umber. There we go. So we've got kind of a pinker version and then this more gray version here. And that's pretty close. And we can use this color in our foreground too. So let's go ahead and use it on some of these buildings, this more pink color. And you can switch to a smaller brush if you want to get in here and do some really small little squares and things. I think that 
that's good enough for now, probably. And then let's use a lighter version of this up here, too. Just a little bit. This will unify your painting if you use the same colors in different areas. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's use a little bit of this pink color on, over here. I'm seeing it over here. Just some buildings and things. gray. Great. Pretty happy with that. Use a little bit of this darker purpley color in here, I'm seeing a little bit. Okay. While I have that color wet, I'm going to go ahead and use my Let's use this color, or this brush, I mean, the angle brush here. I might get a little bit more of that quinacridone and ultramarine. And you can use doxazine purple if you want. I'm just going to use this color. do my branches. I'm going to use this angle brush because it'll just give me good long branches. Did you take a photo before I did this? Mm. I'm just bringing them in here, and these are going to come all the way out, almost touching the Eiffel Tower right over here. And then angle down to some of our open spots. Like that, and then this whole corner is going to be covered, but... So just bring some out like this, and down. What's the matter, hon? You're sighing over there. Just ordering difficulties. What? Just ordering difficulties. Oh. I told him I'd go back and get yours. He didn't get mine right? Dinner problems. First world problems. Our fast food is not fast enough. Okay, so there we go. There's our little branches, and I think I'm going to just stick with this brush and get a little bit lighter version. 
get some of that blue from the sky. That's the way we can kind of make this look super blendy is to get that get it fairly close to that sky color. So I'm just going to get it really it'll be really subtle at first and then I can always go in, in here and darken this up as I want to add more detail, but keeping it starting it out really blendy like this will help me not get too dark too quickly. I think I want a little bit white on the top there. There we go. So this is that pink purple color that I mixed up earlier. I'm just going to go down through my main lines here. They're actually very kind of thin, so keep it keep it light and kind of sketchy. I'm just I'm not trying to do this in all in one line, and that way it will look a little bit broken up, and it'll give it that impressionist feeling. And we don't have to worry about it being a perfectly straight line. We can kind of get it close. You know, we don't want it to look super sloppy necessarily. We want to kind of keep it in the right. Uh, right shape and all but we can be a little bit more artistic with it that way we don't have to be super defined it'll be a little bit softer looking we'll give it that impressionist feeling by having this kind of softly almost broken line that we're doing here like that okay and it's very very light to start with we're not going too dark too quickly so then I can go back in with my darker color here now start adding a little bit more depth in a couple places just a few little dabs here and there this line here is fairly dark all the way down And grab some of that yellow from the background if I want to and kind of dab it over. That'll kind of soften up my line too. So I'm taking that background color, just going over this, making it a little bit softer. And I am liking using this brush, but you can use whatever brush that you find is easier for you. So I like using angle brushes for my lines, but if you're more comfortable using a liner brush for your lines, you know, by all means do that. So whatever works best for you is what I would do. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that, whatever that little thing was right there, a little bit of that part that's up in the middle of the Eiffel Tower right there. And then let's do our line across. Dabbing it down a little bit. You getting pictures of these, honey. Just going to kind of try to get in all my bare bones here. The main, main lines of my tower. Get a little bit more of that darker color for down here. And then this darker part starts down in here. Goes across. Just 
going to tap across there. Let's do our little arches right here for the legs. Bring this one out a little bit more. Okay, and then I'm going to grab that kind of gray color and just sort of lightly fill in, leaving some random spots, but just kind of filling in this bottom section a little bit. Okay. Let's go ahead and switch this number one round here. titanium I need some more white Spencer can bring your food in if you want to eat any while it's, while it's warm. Might as well. Is he back? I don't know. You're the one talking to him, I just thought. All right, so I'm going to mix a little bit of this purple color in with this cadmium yellow color that I just mixed. Maybe a little bit of white, too. What? Thanks for letting me know. And uh, the yellow and purple will. I was the one talking to him. <laughs> what? Oh, he's here now. Okay. I'm going to use this light highlight color here to some highlights on my dark areas and then grab a little bit of that I think it's kind of closer to this gray color here add some water to it so that it flows and add a little bit of glazing liquid so it sticks and I'm gonna this is up here is pretty light but down here it's fairly dark so it starts to get dark right in here I'm just going to go ahead and kind of add some dabs of darker color, try to kind of indicate some of this structure here, just keep it a little bit random. Again, just kind of keeping my brush strokes light. And do some little cross hatching indications. So there's stripes down here. You can do these little stripies across.
And then there's going to be another line that comes in right in the middle here, in between those. And joins up with right here. Which is the split, this line right here. Comes all the way up. And goes up the middle. Then do a little cross hatching. Kind of fits in those little squares that we did, made. And then do it the opposite direction. And it's pretty dark up here, so I want to get a little bit lighter for these ones. And like I said, I'm really keeping this very kind of almost messy, so don't. What? Did it go off when you got it, zoomed it in? Uh -huh. No. Nope. Okay. Right, so. Do some more cross pieces. And we learned when we were at uh, up in uh, New York City when we visited the Statue of Liberty that this Eiffel who created the tower here was also involved in the Statue of Liberty. He created the inside structure of it. Ooh. It's all these cross... It looks just like this inside of the uh, Statue of Liberty. Remember that, huh? I asked you a question, but you obviously didn't hear me. Ooh. I asked you a question, but you didn't... I said, do you remember that? Yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> I was eating, sorry. Okay. The food has arrived. He's no longer in the building. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're just, we're, let's do another layer here. There's a line kind of right above those arches. And then... Let it go a little bit darker down here as we get toward the bottom. It gets darker. Really try not to get too fuzzy about this. Just get the main, kind of the main sections 
right? Now I'm kind of looking for my shadowed areas here. See where I might have some shadows showing up down in here. And then I want to incorporate the bottom of the building with the buildings around them. So I just want to bring some buildings in front of these feet that kind of hide them a little bit, obscure the end of the buildings. So do that. <clears throat> some of this lighter color to add some highlights. There's some bigger crosses down in here. Bigger X, X marks. little dots down underneath this railing here. Dark spots. Let's put in some flowers. So I'm going to grab that pink that I've got up here, add some white. Dab my flowers. Just using the tip of this quarter inch angle brush, dabbing these flowers. Go ahead. So we got a question. Okay. Um, this related to a post in your Facebook group. Okay. You want to know if you were hosting a watch party? Uh, what no. What would you? Oh, if I was? Yeah, what would you? Which video of mine? Yeah. Um, that rooster one was pretty funny. The dandelions, I think we laughed all the way through that one. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what we said, but that, I remember when that one being really funny. The starfish one was funny. I'm trying to remember what else. I would pick a funny one. So yeah. I'm trying to remember which ones were kind of more fun. Do you remember which one? Or maybe one that we didn't talk too much in, or at least me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, some um, Jillian was talking about doing that in, in the groups. So mm -hmm. it'd be fun since we're going to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> we might as well get get some people to, together that want you know want to socialize. I think that you can. I think that you could just Skype. Uh, each other or you could do like a I'm trying to think of how you would do it um, I know you can do it on Facebook but you have to have a video that is uploaded to Facebook and I don't have a lot of my I don't think I have any of my videos really uploaded to Facebook so 
All right. There, let's get some white and do some brighter white. Pretty white. This is really pretty. I like this. These are fun to do too. They're very easy. Mm -hmm. Just dab, dab, dab. Dabba, dabba. Yep. Dabbing, dabbing. And cherry blossoms pretty much grow straight along that that branch. So you can keep them pretty close to the branch there and just if you need to, you could always add more branches later if you, you know, decide you need them in an area that you don't have a branch. Dab a few flowers and a branch out towards it but you honestly don't have to have them all kind of connected as long as your flowers kind of connect you can kind of visually though your brain will kind of realize there's a branch there somewhere <laughs> you know I don't always worry too much about having a branch to every single blossom But I wouldn't put one out here without a branch, you know. I mean, and actually, it might not look bad to have a, you know, one or two coming out this way, too. If you want to get creative with it, you know, go for it and add, add some. Okay, and then I'm going to go back in with that dark pink here, brighter pink, and just kind of try to find the centers of some of these, if I can do it. I might probably need a smaller brush. Let's get a little round spotter here. And I can go back in and put some smaller branches in with this. I want darken up. If we've covered up the branch completely, you can kind of draw it back in and then use this to put some little centers and just a few little flowers. You don't have to do all of them, but just you know, dab a little bit of this darker pink in the centers of some of these blossoms. And dab a few on their own because you'll see the, the buds will be these darker colored. So you can dab some along the branches if you want, just on their own. some white, some more white here and there. Alrighty, and then I want to work on this area here, so I'm going to grab my Deerfoot Stippler, some of my yellow, a little bit of this yellow that I've mixed up there, and a lot of white. I want it very 
bright white ish. Try to get it as close to that original color as I can. It's probably not quite enough. And I can even use that zinc white too if I want it super transparent. And I'm going to use glazing liquid to make it more transparent because that white is very opaque. Let's see. That's pretty close. So I'm just going to start in here. Oops. Oh. Don't do that. Grab that white glazing liquid, some of that yellow color. There we go. Transparent. The so if you're if you do like this and you can't see through it, then you've got it too dark. So just add more of your glazing liquid. And it's okay if it's kind of cloudy. That's why I left the white, titanium white, because I kind of do want it to cover over some of this that we've got, because these are such dark colors in here. So I'm just going to kind of scrub in this color and put it right over the top of my Eiffel Tower, too. Making it look like it's glowing, right? Mm -hmm. Flipping it down here. We've got some sun rays happening. This is kind of our sun right here, so just going to kind of got very kind of loose paint on here. And if it doesn't go on dark enough the first time just do this a couple of times don't try to get it all on one setting if it's not going on right I'd rather do it three or four times than doing do it too dark you know um, right off the bat but I think that that's pretty good there I'm pretty happy with that I might add a little bit more white a little bit more of that glazing liquid just like right in here going a little bit brighter white where that white is supposed to be coming through. But this is going to dry, so I don't want it. I don't want to mess with it too much while it's kind of sticky. And I can add a little clouds in here if I want to add more clouds now can put some of those in right in there maybe a little up in here I really probably don't want to be doing this around the outside of my Eiffel Tower but I can kind of go over the top of it and obscure it a little bit that way like it's soften it up a little bit this whole thing looks kind of cloudy, so I'm just going to use the edge of my brush and just sort of cloud out that whole Eiffel Tower there to soften that whole thing up. Okay, let's forget paying bills. Let's go to Paris. <laughs> I don't know. It's tempting, isn't it? Yep. But it has to be nice weather like this. Yeah. You've been there. How many times have you been there? Several many. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been about six years. Really? It's been that long? Huh? Yep. Crazy. I'm just going in with that kind of light pink here and just sort of 
darkening up just a little bit. Maybe we can have an art, some glazing liquid. art rally there in Paris. There you go. Everybody. Have a meetup. Yep. That'd be a fun place to do it. We'd lose a few people, so. <laughs> We'd lose a few people? <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think everybody can afford to run off to Paris. Oh, okay. I thought you meant we'd lose them in Paris. <laughs> oh, well, that too, probably. Like running off. Everybody has a has a partner. Hold hands. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy system. Okay, so now I'm just kind of playing here. Just kind of looking at my reference photo and seeing if there's anything else that I want to kind of darken up or add to. Pretty happy. I think that that center line of my Eiffel Tower could be a little bit darker, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So, which of your tower paintings would you recommend? somebody starting with if they just want to kind of jump in um i think this one's fairly you know it's not too bad i think this one's you know pretty forgiving probably because it's so kind of dabbed you know dabbed on there but i don't know it depends on your painting style some people find that this kind of painting really drives them crazy so if you like a more structured uh, actually, both of them are pretty, both of my uh, Eiffel Tower paintings are pretty uh, impressionist type of styles. So, neither one of them is really super detailed. I'm fast making this one more detailed, though, the more I mess with it. <laughs> I can't help it. So, just adding... Some more darks in here. I don't want to go too close to this side where I've got all that nice light, but I did want to kind of darken up a few areas here just to kind of give it a little bit more detail. The way you could pull out your pencil and go over some of your lines if you wanted to with your pencil and you know define some of these borders if you want to you know crisp up some lines go over the top of some of these um, this is probably not the right color for it I would probably use a darker color but I think I'm gonna I don't know if I'm quite ready to stop let me do I keep thinking I might stop, but then I don't want to get a little bit more of that lighter color. Dab it on up here. Because in our picture, this part up here is a little bit lighter than down here. So I just want to lighten it up just a little bit. Okay, somebody has said that they seem to have a hard time getting that hazy look. Mm -hmm. What are your pro tips? Um, well, using the, your background color is, is the best way of doing it. So get, it, get your background color and use that to go over the top. So that's why I did the yellow over the top here. That's what will give it that hazy look um, going keeping it fairly transparent and um, and just, you know, doing it in 
layers so that you're not covering too much too quickly. But if I wanted to, you know, haze out the edges of my um, Eiffel Tower here, I would grab that blue up here, you know, and whoops, grab that blue. Ooh. That blue there, that's the background color, and just maybe glaze over the top of it a little bit to soften up my edges and make it look kind of hazy. So you want to get as close to that background color as you can. And just kind of lightly go over with a transparent layer. And that's what will give it that hazy look. I'm going to go ahead and do that with this. Somebody asked, could they just water down the paint? Yeah, you could. Mm-hmm. You could, um, yeah, that would work. The only, tr the only trouble with that is just that you, you know, when you do that, that way you have to, uh, there's not as much forgiving, you know, like you've got to get it all pretty much the same wateriness and the same, get it all on. You can't go back over it much, you know, if it's, if you've got a watered down look, um, you, uh, like we could, gl we could have glazed in our, you know, when I say glaze, I just mean, you know, use the watered down paint to do it. And just to kind of slowly built up our layers that way. So yeah, I mean that's that's definitely a way to do it. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop because I I don't want to get too fussy with this. Then I could go in and and uh, add some brighter colors to some rooftops here. map out some windows or edges of buildings too with my little bit lighter color here okay we got more questions okay all right so the first question was well i guess i'll first do the thing Okay. Uh, wouldn't too much water ring down potentially cause underbinding? Yes, but if you use a little bit of glazing liquid, it won't. So that's what the glazing liquid's for. It it creates a bind, a, a bond. Okay. So yeah. And then the second question was: so the shadow inside the tower is created with doing the background the way this was done. Uh, this, what shadow? Um, I'm not sure. I think they said the shadow inside the tower. So this part? Or, oh, like in here? Are they saying like uh, along the inside edges? Because the, cause the background is showing through. I'm not, I haven't completely covered the, this part up here. There, you know, with paint. In between, I just did the little crisscrosses, but... You're still seeing the sky through it in places. So um, down here I did a little bit more solid color. But the only, and it's really not solid at all. <laughs> like none of it is super solid. It's all pretty, you know, there are some places that are, that are solid that, you know, where the mechanism and the elevator and stuff is. But a lot of it is got an airiness got lines through it and stuff so all right I'm gonna call that done I'm not gonna mess with it anymore because I'm gonna keep keep going on it for days here Mark wants to eat it's 41 after oh you already ate okay so yeah, I need I want to eat. I gotta go get your food oh okay <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there we go. There we have it. Voila, as they say we, in Paris. Yeah. 
Uh, and not with a W. No, it's not. It's not D W A L L A. Please don't spell it that way. It gives me hives. <laughs> <laughs> Give you that nervous twitch. I do. I get a twitch in my eye when I see it spelled that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks so, for. Uh, so real quick, uh -huh. um, if they don't want to draw this. Yes. They can go to my Patreon page and I will have the traceable for this up at some point. I did, probably. And I stalled her and now she's back to painting. I'm not sure so, when. Maybe tomorrow. So the traceable is on patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Yeah. Yes. They're available at the $1 level. And then there's other levels $5, $10, give you access to bonus videos, photos, Facebook. Special Facebook yeah, groups. Yeah, so if you, you know, want to watch something on Saturday, we just did that bonus video that was like five hours long. <laughs> five hour. Almost. Almost five hour uh, bonus video. Not yeah. too shabby either. That'll take up a big chunk of your Saturday there. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, but yeah, we've got over 300 videos, so hopefully you'll be able to find something to watch this weekend. Mm -hmm. While we're gone, and next Tuesday night we'll be gone also, and then we'll be back the following Saturday on the 23rd for a we're painting uh, something. ocean sunset. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice, it'll yes. Pretty. It'll be pretty. The funny thing is Cinnamon just painted it for the same exact picture, but oh, she didn't wow. do a tutorial out of it. She did it for a, for a um, crowdfunding thing. I think somebody paid her to paint it or something, so... Hmm. Anyhow, so we'll see. I think she added a girl to hers. And I'm going to bring this out more even. I'm just seeing that it's not out far enough. And then also, if you're first Inside. here, you can click the show more below the video. There's a list of all the uh, supplies that she used, the paint colors and the canvas size, link to the Amazon store to buy more art supplies. Thebrushguys.com. Uh, five percent off code Angela Fine Art. I haven't done this in a while. I'm rusty. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's you know it, there's a link down below to that. You can check out all the brushes that Angela lists there and use that code and get five percent off. They're great to work with. Yeah. And it's just indirect ways to support the channel. Right. Yeah. If you already need brushes, might as well. Might as well go. Mm -hmm. And then all the stocking links. To Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. Yeah. <laughs> right. I need to stop. I'm going to sign it. And I think I'm going to use my brush for that. So I can get it nice and small. Do it over here. Add a little bit of that glazing liquid so it sticks. Come up at least a finger's width there. So thanks for watching with us today, guys. And uh, we'll be enjoying our little grandson next week. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, Liam's going to get lots of kisses. <laughs> <laughs> and Courtney's going to have to fight me for holding him so mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> since I didn't get to hold him much the last time so <laughs> somebody gave me his cold not naming names but God, Spencer <laughs> God, why do you do that? hey <laughs> I can't help it that you wanted to kiss me <laughs> so I mean I, I know I'm that irresistible to you so <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> goodness i love you <laughs> i love you <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> sorry is it still recording yeah it is <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> but we really appreciate everybody yes stopping by seeing this tonight on this i'm adding a little bit of yellow in here i it's can see that awesome. that's why i'm just talking okay good we really appreciate all the love and su support we do we you appreciate guys are awesome. you guys you make our day appreciate you letting us take a break every now and then to group was really sweet the, I was supposed to paint earlier today but they were like no go enjoy your vacation so 
That's pretty cool. They're awesome that way. Just like part of the family. Yep. So thanks, ladies. And we will. There we go. I like that better. Just a little golden glow in our in our flowers, too. Alrighty, I'm going to call that good. Thanks so much, and we will see you next time. Bye, guys.